Well, it's been a little while since you've visited the Diecast Museum, most likely, and if not, and are checking out my old videos, well, thank you kindly. Today, we're looking at a whole bunch of new Auto World, Johnny Lightning, and even a Racing Champions Mint. So when I say new, a lot of this is new for 2023, including a few Auto World store exclusives, which really means you just have to go to Auto World online to buy it. Uh, certain eBay sellers will probably have them as well, as they're not really that exclusive, but all to say, very attainable collectibles here. I purchased all these with my own money. I just have to say that as a disclaimer. This is not a paid uh, sponsorship of any kind. So uh, what we're going to do is look at all of the awesome cars that I've chosen to collect. Some of these go back to uh, late 2022, a few cars I meant to open up even back then. So I've got a few of those. But as you can see, just some really nice cars. And uh, most of these being opened up, including these Challengers, which I've been trying to decide whether I want to open them up or not. And I think I actually do. Um, I don't like to keep a lot of the carded cars on my display walls because they just take up quite a bit of room. And as you know from my uh, display museum, most things are shown to you mint loose. So for that reason... No trouble there to open them up. We're not looking to resell these. Um, just collect. Got a whole bunch of Ratfink stuff too. If any Ratfink fans out there, Auto World and Johnny Lightning. So we'll be looking at those and opening up those trucks and trailers. Uh, there's even a tow truck with Ratfink. Now, the packaging we're going to take a quick look at as we open up each car. Uh, potentially just skipping right through them if there's nothing on the back of any real interest. However, Johnny Lightning and Auto World often do have a little description next to the vehicle telling you a few interesting facts about the car in real life, which is always kind of neat. And in some cases, they have like a whole write-up on the back of the car dart. So for those instances, I'll just suggest that you pause and read it yourself if you like. Uh, to keep the video moving, I won't be stopping to read any of that. All right, on with the show. Let's open up some diecast. Just quickly, the order that we're opening everything up here. Johnny Lightning, the newest vehicles first. Going back to some of the older models that I picked up last year, the end of last year. Some of the exclusives that are going to stay in the package right here, but we'll take a look at that really cool packaging and information on them. Auto World Special Edition vehicles are next. Two out of three of those being opened up. And then we've got the Racing Champions Mint, that awesome little Ford. And a few highlights of the last three premium release six car sets that came out, including the latest one with that coveted minivan. Let's get everything out on the review table now. Two cars for my favorite series, Project in Progress. This is definitely one of my favorite series next to Demolition Derby in the Johnny Lightning release. And these cars are very well detailed with kind of a patched together, repaired look, some rust and other things that you'll see a lot closer as we get the cars out of the package. And of course the packaging does have some of that information, which you can pause on there. This one's called the Yardbird, so that's a little collectible card, I guess, that you can keep. And of course all the other stuff in the back. Then we got Red Runner. So these are limited to 12,018 pieces each, so that's quite a few cars actually, but Nothing like the uh, releasage of Hot Wheels, for instance, which are numbering in the hundreds of thousands. So you can see there's a couple other project in progresses from last release wave. I think I got those El Caminos, or at least one of them. Yeah, I missed out on one of them. I'm not sure which one, actually, now that I think of it. But anyways, they're kind of hard to get unless you order them early on, and there's still time. So let's open this one up. Now, I'm not going to open them all on camera because it just takes too long. But this is pretty much how it goes. So you get that little display, kind of, looks like the card is stuck to the plastic. It's got some, oh I see, you can just slide it out. So you can keep the card if you want for the car, and it's got the whole series on it as well. I think, yeah, there it is. And there it is. What a sweet little ride. All die cast, of course. Rubber tires. 
It's got that, uh, I think that's intentionally faded out, the Roadrunner livery on the sides. It's almost like a stripe that's deteriorated, I suppose. It's got a little license plate on there. Acme 1. Primer door and louvers on the side windows. And this car does have an opening hood. Got a nice little detailed matching blue engine. And a white interior. Check out all the details on that dashboard. Very well. Very well done. I absolutely love these little Johnny Lightning cars. And increasingly, they are starting to be more and more 164 scale. When I compare them to other vehicles, I'm aware of actual size in the real world. Although they don't say they're 164 scale, I know that Johnny Lightning has sort of started to shift that way with a lot of their models, especially the ones that are being released in the series now. So there's another messy opening. I did, full disclaimer, buy two of these so I can keep one on the card back. Um, I don't always do that, but like I said, it's one of my favorite series. So we're going to do a little side-by-side -side here. What's the license plate on this one? Roadbird. Right, so we've got the names. I guess they changed the name of, uh, what was this other one? Yardbird to Acme, I'm not really sure. Sorry for the blurge there. We've got two different color interiors, different wheels. So it's really nice to see some major changes in the uh, release. Let's see if the engine's blue. I'll bet you it is. Yes, it's a blue engine. That makes sense. But yeah, really nice little cars there. Obviously, they're good rollers. They're Johnny Lightnings. Um, so that's the first two out. We're going to make some room. Get on into some more awesome die cast here. And I think we're going to go straight to the, the two car sets here. Got Import Heat and American Heroes. We've actually got two Import Heats to open up. So we'll just put those to the back for now. American Heroes. Lots going on here. Nice. Very nice set. Now, I did just say about the 164 scale. Clearly, these two vehicles are not in perfect scale with each other. The Suburban would be much larger. or Sorry, it's a Chevy Tahoe. Shorter version of the same kind of truck. And then you've got the Jeep Cherokee XJ, which is a pretty good scale. And we've got some facts, some heroic facts. And what else we got on the back? A little story about first responders. Unsung heroes of the communities. Little blurb about white lightnings. Those are the collector chase vehicles by Johnny Lightning. And yeah, let's get these opened up. Let's see what we have here. Should we start with the Chevy Tahoe? Yeah, I'd say so. Chevy Tahoe looks really nice. Now you'll notice I'm not even shining these vehicles up as they come out of the package, although they will obviously benefit from a little bit of a microfiber chamois wipe down. Really shine up that black paint. Um, I guess we're struggling a little bit with the focus, maybe. I'm not sure. Put something behind it. Could be that it's just a very solid black vehicle and the cameras do have trouble with darker objects. State Trooper, High Patrol, Texas Plates. Pretty cool. Very, very cool. Okay, let's look at the second vehicle. And Florida State K9. I guess we still need it in the back. So again, very nice shiny paint job. I think this one has an opening hood. In fact, uh, I'm pretty sure it does. Well, I don't know. Not going to try. Just too difficult right now. And I've just put a bunch more fingerprints on it that didn't need to be there. State Trooper. Yeah. All right. Well, let's hope that the Focus doesn't have so much trouble on all the vehicles. Because that is a little disorienting. And now we have the Import Heat. Japanese Classics. And I did get both color variations of this. So there's a version B and a version A. Usually released around the same time. Often version B will be released maybe a few weeks or even a couple months after. Not usually months, I should say. But sometimes they're just hard to get. But you've got some... Important facts. Imp that's cute. Important facts. Can we focus? Uh, <laughs> yeah, so neat stuff there about the cars. Wow, got a nice big story about that uh, sort of car culture. And I think that'll probably be the same on both. Yep. And are the fun facts the same? They are not, so 
Wow. Very cool. Yeah, I'm a fan of these cars big time. I mean, I own this car in real life. 1984 Nissan 300ZX. It's a summer car of mine. Nice, uh, nice little cruiser. So we're going to open these up right now. And there goes all the information. Gone. Buckley preserved here in digital format. First out, the 1990 240SX, followed by the 85300ZX. Two popular little drift cars. Let's look at one at a time. Yeah, what a beauty. Love that blue interior with the blue graphics on it. Two-tone paint. Now, these do have opening hoods. I got it. Yeah. There it is. Is it a turbo? Might be a turbo. Yeah, it's got the turbo scoop on the hood. Do we have a turbo? Very cool. What's the license plate? I always like to read these license plates. Turbo 85. Okay. Now the newer version. It's a little drifter. No opening hood on this one, interestingly. It's a newer casting. Super detailed wheels. Defrost lines. And the back says simply Nissan. Michigan plates. All right. Rollers. Check. Trucks rolled. Good. Okay. One more dual set here. I don't know if they're called dual sets. That's what I call them. And we've got the same two cars. Do a side by side really quickly here. And I should mention, I'm going to look at all of these cars once they're all out on the table at the end of this video. After I've shone them all up with the little micro sham, we're just going to do a pan over. And, uh, you know, maybe I'll, maybe I'll do this a little differently. Sometimes I open up the cars with you guys. Other times I open them up all in advance. But right now I'm kind of having fun just going through the steps right now. So that hood's, uh, there we go. The hood's down now. Really nice. Gold and black. And the uh, black and silver. And then we've got two different wheels on the 240SX. It's like hubcaps on these upper one, if, unless I'm mistaken. You steal these with hubcaps versus alloys. Both have the Nissan plate. Really nice, really nice, realistic looking cars. Beautifully crafted by Johnny Lightning. Well, I couldn't resist and I've already gone ahead and shot up a few of the cars as I go and confirmed that the paint is absolutely perfect on these vehicles. So we'll be doing that as we go, perhaps, or like I said, maybe after. I haven't decided yet. Um, this car, I was uncertain whether I was going to keep it in the package or not because it's really cool. References those AMT buildable 124th or 125th model kits of yesteryear. I think it's still available now, actually, probably for certain with the release of this car. And so you've got that fun fact there. Perhaps we can uh, read that. And on the back, not too much here. Uh, well, yeah, there's a little blurb about the model kit. Surfshark. Cadillac Ambulance. Very cool. Now, this one is totally out of scale. It's not 164th at all. It's very small for the size of a vehicle in real life. But it's got that weathered look. And, you know, I just love those. So I had to pick this one up. Although, in general, I, I tend to avoid this casting these days. I used to collect it a lot before I really cared about scale and before that was offered by so many different models. As, as you know, there's a lot on the market available. So, very nice weathering job, though. So, I could not resist. Interesting uh, content here. Malibu Beach Rescue. And what an interesting looking car. The surfboards. I'm not sure if those are part of the... Hmm. Yeah, they are uh, seem to be fastened to the roof. I'm not really sure how. Maybe they've got pins through the roof. I'm not going to pe peel them off to try to find out. So I think we'll just leave it at that. It's a nice, shiny car. Looks pretty big compared to the other cars all the same, but that's just the length of this car. In real life, it would dwarf a little 300ZX. It would be far more than just a tail fin longer. 
And I would say that one, little 300ZX, is probably pretty close to scale. I'm not 100% certain on that, but moving right along. We've got uh, two cars that have been in my collection just kind of hanging out in the overflow area for a while. I meant to open them up. I thought about keeping them on the card art because I do like the content. But realistically, I never used to be so concerned about this. So I've got to nip it in the bud now. I'm not a cardboard collector so much as a die cast collector. Although it is really cool that these companies put in so much awesome information and um, actual work into the graphics. It's very presentable and I can fully understand why uh, it's hard to open these cars up for a lot of people, including myself. So here we have the 73 Pontiac Le Mans. There was five other vehicles in release two, so that was 2022 release. Looking at probably about this time last year it was released, so you're probably not going to see this in your stores readily. And I think this one was the same release. Yes, it was. So we've got a nice little 79 Chevy Monte Carlo here as well. And so these are two castings I really enjoy collecting. So we're going to open those up. Yeah, there's nothing more to see on the back. It's always a messy ordeal when you just rip the clamshell off the card art. You could go around with an X-Acto knife and carefully cut the card backs off and save them. I have done this in the past as well, but I've literally got boxes and boxes of cardboard now. And it just has to stop because the collecting isn't stopping. And like I said, there's just not enough room for everything. And not enough time to review all of this information anyways, any time that I can foresee with the amount of stuff that's coming out these days. It's probably set to continue. Smaller spaces require smaller size collections. So diecast will, in my opinion, always have a place in collectors' hearts. New and old. Really enjoy these quality pieces. And uh, very nice to park them all together. You can almost feel like you've got your own little movie set. Period correct. Or perhaps a blast down memory lane. For me, I like to display them primarily in the diorama junkyard. Even though the cars are not weathered or junked in most cases. I just really like how they all look in there together. And we'll take a pan over, of course, at the end of this video as well to see which cars made it there for sure. The Monte Carlo is going to have a visit there anyways. Those ones are definitely going there. Um, I've already got a couple 300s in there, so might as well drop those in as well. And the next couple of Johnny Lightnings we're looking at are going to stay in the package just because I only bought one and I really do like the packaging. Plus, they're limited edition, so very low mintage not 12,000 but literally 2,496 store exclusive so you can figure that out online you got the uh, Wenkel engine here kind of artwork with the RX-7 logo new casting it says the Wenkel rotary engine and here it is in a race guys now I may regret not opening this car up because I really do want to have it open to join my little RX-7 collection um hmm I did not get the exclusive Monte Carlo. I'm going to have to look for that one. I have the Ford Ranger here. Interesting. I missed that. Anyways. Uh, yeah. it's But it's nice. I think I'll just find a place on my very limited wall space that I do have for such the items. And then when it comes time to either take it down or put it in a tubware tote, I may open it up at that point. This one I'm definitely keeping in the package or trying to find a second one. As I really like this uh, Red Ranger. I used to drive one like that. For a short time at a, an old employer's place that needed me to plow the driveway with a little four-speed standard ranger quite a bit of fun and anyways this one's got the motocraft livery on the side alloy wheels and uh yeah a little bit of information there so we're gonna keep those in the package for now just got two more johnny lightnings to look at and then we're into auto world uh, zingers. I don't normally keep the zingers in the package. I'm not really sure if I'm going to do that. Street Freaks. It's got the little collectible card back. Other than that, it's just a generic background. 16,000, so probably no need to keep it in the package. I know I have a few of these already on the wall. Um, in card backs. Yeah, I'm not going to keep it in the package. I got enough, enough stuff in the package. Alright, we open it up. 
And we've got that awesome little truck to look at. There's those little card backs that they do keep. Really not sure why. It's all banged up and bent. And, but oh well. Fun little pieces that don't take too much space to keep. And here you go. Nice. Nice little mark on the roof. Is that, is that going to come off? Well, it might take a little bit more effort than that. I like that uh, copper painted box liner to match the sides. You see why I like to open them up though, right? I mean, you can really see the quality of the paint job, the details. You just can't get the same enjoyment out of these vehicles in the package unless you just like rereading the facts over and over again, which are interesting. Definitely. So that's just a beautiful truck. I love it. And boy, does it ever roll well. It's got the comb mold wheels, so they're not rubber, but they are plastic tires on it. And we've got another zinger. Now, I was planning on opening this one up. Maybe I will. Kind of getting into an opening mood once again. Got to work my way up to the Challengers, after all. And this one is the Ford Police. Very limited. 2,496. Uh, the card back does come with a wrinkle in it. I'm not sure if it was bent or if it was just the ink at the factory. So, that could be a reason to open it. But lots of fun facts on this one. Uh, it's a beautiful model. And then this is the part for me that's hard. I would really like to somehow preserve that. So I might actually open this with an X-Acto blade. And um, carefully cut the clamshell if I do open it. For now, I'm going to keep in the package hanging on the wall. So that's all the Johnny Lightnings. Uh, I do have a Racing Champions Mint. Correction, one more Johnny Lightning that is staying in the package. That's Ed Ross. Keep on trucking tow truck service. Um... Yeah, I think I'm going to open this one up with you guys. So I'll get the scissors out. We'll do that. It is an exclusive, but whatever. Uh, and then we've got the Racing Champions Mint, which we can look at. Nothing special about the packaging. 8,500 these produced. Six in the series. It's a 2022 lineup, I guess. Wow, so it's about a year and a bit old, but really cool truck. Just decided I had to have that one. I used to drive one of these as well. I got that step side sort of box on it. Opening tailgate as well. Impressive. My 150 on the license plate. Very nicely detailed. Let's see if the hood opens. Oh, it does. Beautiful. There's an engine in there. It's detailed. It's deep down in the engine bay. It's got rubber tires. It's got a little bit of a bounce. Probably could straighten that tire out a bit. Oh, I see. We just got a little bit of rubber flashing on it. Super easy to fix that. Just need to get the, the knife and just slice that off carefully. But these are really nice trucks and uh, in die cast anyways. Perhaps you like them in real life too. I Comfortable. I remember that. And Ed Roth's keep on trucking towing service. Tow truck is coming out of the package. It's a 66 Chevy Wrecker. So if you're inclined to keep all the card back fun stuff, you could. We got this little piece of paper. There's really nothing on it, so probably no real need. And there is the truck. Opening hood on this model. Very heavy piece. It's got some great details, including that, uh, that little attachment there, which looks like you could take that off and hang it over the back of the tailgate. Let me get some focus on this truck, please. Tow and go, it says on the license plate. Might be time for a new camera phone. Uh, I don't know about you guys, but I find that these phones kind of start out with amazing video and photography abilities when you first get them, and then maybe it's because of being dropped over the years or perhaps artificially um, lowered in quality to make you think you need a new one. Part of the buying cycle of dropping $1,000 every year or two on phones. Really, I should just get back to using my SLR camera. Take the digital component completely out of it. Because it always had great footage. Just a little bit more cumbersome and a lot bulkier. So I may end up doing that, though, because I'm really not enjoying how this focus is always hunting in and out. And I've got plenty of light in this room. I've got an overhead light. 
on the table. I've got, oh, about 2,500 watts burning away on the ceiling. Should be enough. Always was in the past. So this one's a roller, but we've got a tire a little misaligned. Axle's a little stiff in there, and it's a little bit... Sorry, I was all over the place there. Not entirely the camera's fault that, that was out of focus, I suppose. But, uh, yeah, the axles are a bit long for the chassis. As you can see, there's a lot of room to go back and forth, so... More of a static display piece, which is fine. I mean, you could use it as a toy. They're, they're durable enough, at least everything other than this plastic toe component. So, that's it for Johnny Lightning and the um, Racing Champions. We've got a whole bunch of Auto World stuff to look at next. So, let's make some room. A little bit, maybe. Oh, we still got room. Let's just get ready. Clear the table of all the cardboard. Now this one I did buy two of, one to keep as a wall hanger, and mainly because I really like the artwork on the card back. It's also a special edition, low sort of mintage. Uh, you got some premium facts on the vehicle. Can we see that? Kind of. It's hard to see because the plastic blister overlaps some of the uh, writing. And uh, this is a 1980 Chevy K10 Silverado with a camper, Overland Edition. Does claim to be 164th scale, as Auto World always does claim, and that is truly the benchmark for most of my collection. Now there's no chance of reading that. <laughs> and this is a big, heavy truck. Very large. Very well equipped. Uh, Silverado, bush bar, fog lights, this giant BF Goodrich, mud terrain, TA tires, this very cool kind of matching camper box with the wood grain look doors and hatches to match this interesting kind of wood grain paint job. Not sure these trucks ever did come with wood grain, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but don't remember seeing such a thing. And the license plate. Nice. Fragile little ladder here. It's just hanging on. Looks like one of the little things is kind of snapped, but it's there. This probably could come out if you wanted it to. Ooh, do I dare? I don't know. It could. I don't think there's any real net need for me to do that right now, but... Very cool truck. So I love collecting the Silverados, square body trucks of all kinds. Anything from the 80s, 70s and 80s essentially, but what a beautiful roller. Very, very nice quality vehicle. So we'll just park that over there. And the next vehicle that we are looking at is going to be some more Ratfink, I suppose. Another square body. We'll just look at some square bodies. We've got a Ratfink trailer. And we've got the golf truck as well. So get those open up. And we're going to slide these out of these plastic clamshells. Limited edition, 6000 on this piece. I mean, it's nice. 78 Chevy Silverado fleet side. I like the weathering look of the uh, card art. There's the true 164 scale. Built tough. Very tough. That's the golf. And the Rat Fink truck, also 6000 limited. These are Miho exclusives, both of them. And you got that nice airbrush look, paint job, matching card box, 1981 Silverado, so three years newer than the last one. And I've got this trailer. Now it matches. There's no hitch on this truck, but we've got this matching Ratfink trailer. Uh, I mainly bought it just because it's weathered, and Ratfink's kind of neat. But uh, I like the weathered look of the trailer. Normally, I won't buy just trailers on their own because they are kind of expensive and uh, the interest for me is somewhat limited. But anyways, uh, I do have that. There's some other Ratfink trailers that were available in the series. I definitely did not aim to collect them all. But I've got some information there, so maybe we'll just start with that. Sorry, Ratty. There is a trailer. I mean, the base is all metal. And it does have that opening door. And well, it doesn't it's threaded, but it doesn't look like it's going to thread. So that part's die cast. 
plastic uh, box. Nicely painted base. Good rolling wheels. I like those white wall tires. Really fat white wall tires. One is a little misshapen, of course. Always difficult with white wall tires, it seems. Or maybe it's just off the rim. No, it's... Yeah, it wasn't cut right. The rubber's a little bit too big. It's even got a little man door. I wonder if that opens. It does! Carefully, don't break it off. These are fragile. Just little tiny plastic pins holding the whole thing on. Same with the back ramp. I'm not even going to bother trying to open it. Yes, you can put most cars in the back. Um, but this is a this is a display piece for me. So I think we'll just leave it as such. And uh, let's get these open up with some scissors off camera, of course. Too much crinkling. Okay, let's get this beautiful truck out of the package. Take a look at it up close with you guys. And there it is. Very, very chromey rims. Opening tailgate. Oh, it does have a hitch. Well, that's perfect. That makes sense. Very cool. So we can tow the trailer with this Silverado. Opening engine bay as well. Or hood to expose the engine bay. Nicely detailed chrome trim all the way around. And a heavy piece, of course. These are very heavy pieces. The tires are very thin, so you can adjust them onto the rims. Uh, they do tend to settle a little bit in shipping. You get them just the way they're supposed to be, so they look perfect. There we go. And there is the Ratfink truck. It's still not a terrific roller. These thin tires tend to be a little bit problematic at times. But you can pull your trailer and it does roll. So that is pretty sweet. Okay, now for the golf truck. The golf livery truck. What a cool piece. I guess I'll just keep that in the background just in case I need that. Focus background. Some interesting patina on this one. It almost looks like an ink wash over top of uh, like a field, sort of sun-roached survivor. And 